Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Thursday Thoughts with Ashley Hannah Murphy and Angela Dotseres, the president and CEO of Leverage Lending Group. Today we're going to be talking about the latest news and updates in the real estate industry. And as always, drop us a comment below and Angelo is going to hop on any second. Let's see. There he is. What's up, Ash? Hey, how's it going? Oh my God. It's going. It's going. How are you we're, doing? We're, we're here. I know. Right? Yep. Uh, it's been a minute. It has. It's been a minute, but yes. now we're, I think we're back in the saddle because we all had a lot of stuff going on. And so we're going to, we're going to get back, get back at it now from, from now until the end of the year. Yes. So listen up, stay tuned put it on the calendar every other Thursday and um, through the end of the year here. So rock and roll. Yep. And there's a lot going on too. I mean, I feel like every day it's literally changing in the industry. And like, so I feel like <laughs> there's a lot of value we can, you know, put out there and, and with like good information, not just like these crazy kind of scary headlines um, that sure. you often see in the news. Right. Um, so let's go ahead and get in it because I got a lot of good stuff from the uh, conference that I yeah. was at. Um, yes. The biggest thing for for me, my biggest takeaway is from the conference. Um, I was able to actually meet the chief economist for Fannie Mae. Oh, Super I saw cool that. Um, he's kind of old school, but God, he was funny, 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 funny. Um, so I, you know, we had a long talk. That he did a presentation for the you know, for the whole, um, you know, for the whole conference, but then he also had a Q&A for like some of the VIP members for the organization that I was with. So there was about 20 people in, uh, in this back room asking questions. There was a ton of questions that were asked, right? Um, very informative. Uh, it just, it, it's interesting to, to see from their, you know, their perspective. Also, there, a lot of this data is online too. So it's on Fannie Mae's website, but first and foremost, the first thing that I thought was just in incredible, 92% of all mortgages have a 4% and less interest rate. 92? 92% of all mortgages have a sub four, four and sub interest rate. Crazy, right? Man, Crazy. and those people are like, let's hang on. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that's first and foremost, uh, that percentage kind of blew my which it makes sense because everybody and their brother was refinancing. Say that again. Right at that and time. Say that stat one more time. 92%, I was like, like, let's say 93. It's like 92 and some change, just round it to 93. Um, 93% of all mortgages, all mortgages in the US are a 4% below and below. Um, crazy, right? Um, you know, there, and also too, the feds, the feds are actually, they're, they're not, not wanting, so the government has been buying mortgage backed securities year after year after year after, after, after the, uh, the crash with the quantity of easing and this, that, and the other. Now, they're letting these mortgage backed securities roll off of their balance sheet because they don't want to be the biggest purchaser of those, you know, mortgage backed securities. The question is, who is going to? buy these mortgage backed securities when our government does not private you know private investors private individuals um and the it, and the, the bigger question is because we know or the, the our government knows like the margin how much money that they're making on those mortgage backed securities but the next purchaser of mortgage backed securities they don't know whether those margins are going to be coming like are they going to want more money to, to buy these mortgage backed securities less money um and so it's it's a very not tumultuous. It's uh, it's they don't know where this could be going. When I'm gonna turn my uh, am I um, freezing up on you? You broke up for a second, but not too bad. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn my Wi-Fi. So one, okay. one, one I think that that part of like mortgages and stuff, and what you just said, I think. Like I 
barely know anything about what you just said and I'm in the industry. I think that that is very confusing to the general it's, it's, public. Like for what, sure, and it's what, still confusing. So the, so the government has been buying mortgage-backed securities, basically, but it's a that's a bundle, right? So like all of our mortgages, when you get a mortgage, right. it's all they bundled. Basically then, printing, correct. What with COVID came out, you know, for it started with, you know, um, it started with uh, the crash, right? And then with the Q, the quantity of easing, somebody had to buy our paper so we wouldn't become insolvent, right? Because so people had still faith in in the mortgage system. So um, they and they have been for a long time, but their train of thought is now we want to. We don't want to be the biggest purchaser of mortgage-backed securities. We need others to come in. Like China is like the second biggest purchaser of mortgage-backed securities. Russia is, I think, third um, purchaser of, of, you know, basically our debt. So the question is, is, who is going to buy that? Is it going to be, a, you know, is it going to be privatized institution going forward? And like, how much money are they going to want to make for for doing so? So it's there's there's a lot of, you know, a, a lot of uncertainty on where that's going to how that's going to play out when I think they said it was like eight trillion dollars um, government holds on the on the books when it comes to uh, security so Whoa. you know as these roll off uh, if I think I think if I'm not mistaken that was the number um, but as they roll off they're just they're letting these you know um, you know roll off of their balance sheet and then their plan is to not have to be so intertwined in the mortgage game um, you know, so hopefully somebody else will come in and start buying these securities. But like, what does that mean, like for the consumer? Like well, that's that's a great question. Um, are, when when rates when rates do drop, are they going to drop as much as we we hope or think? Because they're not going to be buying those paper that paper anymore. You know what I'm saying? Is are the people yeah. that are going to be buying that paper? Do they want more? Do they do they want to make more of a margin? So we may not be able to get, but maybe they won't. Maybe they will. So there's going forward in the future there is some uncertainty of where where things play out now um q2 q3 is their consensus of recession and things potentially getting better when it comes to rates rates easing um because okay. of, so that's that was interesting to hear their perspective uh, on the economy Fannie. as well that was that, that that was the fanny may the uh, chief economist right and so it's for them, it's hard to, which this is another interesting point too. It's, you know, they have all their, you know, their algorithms, they have their data, their historical data that they can, they can kind of forecast what things could happen, what, what things may happen, right, in the future. Yeah. But COVID, and he mentioned this, that COVID was such an outlier, such an anomaly yeah. that they can't, they're having trouble forecasting the future because it changed so many dynamics of everything work at home you know cost for like just you name it it changed it um yep. and so there it's it's difficult for them to forecast what the future may bring because of the way covid had just basically threw everything out the window when it comes to forecasting and modeling and everything like that so that's so uh, that's so crazy yeah, right um, but yeah, that was, those are the biggest things. And, uh, you know, the nine, the 92, 93% of, you know, in the country of have, you know, 4% and less mortgages are it's insane. Yeah. Insane. I just think that that, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what can be done because like, if a lot of times, like, for example, you or myself, personally, when we went to go buy, <clears throat> we were living in a house, right, that we had bought and had a mortgage on. And then here in the last, you know, five years, we decided not for any reason other than we wanted something different in a right. house. Like, it was, you know, like, that's such a luxury, right? We, we got right. to, like, make that decision. And... I mean, today, like, unless you have to move for a job, I, you know, just there's various reasons why you would have to move, right? I mean, I'm just like, like it is, 
you're not you can't you're not going to necessarily be able to move up unless yeah. your financial income has significantly changed correct do you live in california did you just win the lottery because that ticket was actually just sold and okay then yes right <laughs> like um and you ain't gonna need financing right you don't even care about interest rates um but i'm just like i feel like and you just saying that stat i'm like something is gonna have to be there has to be something that changes as, as in, in regards to where the interest rates are in order to help alleviate the inventory problem we have and help sellers be able to make it more advantageous and or affordable, whatever the case may be for them to move. Right. Because it like, if you have a rate under 4%, if it were you and me today, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have made the same decision. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Right. For um, sure. um, so I just think that. So, you know, Fannie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which is interesting. It's interesting to, to see too, like, you know, with the temporary buy downs, right? The total yeah. temp, you know, two, one, three, two, one, two, one, 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 oh, buy downs because rates went up so quick and it made it hard for people to, you know, it, it put a strain on, debt to income ratios, affordability, stuff like that. That's why those products came out is because Fannie Mae realized that this is, this is going to be an issue for borrowers. We so we need, to do, we need to do something to help alleviate this yeah. until the, econ the economic, you know, Excellent. landscape works, looks a little bit better and, it, and they come back more in line. So I thought that was interesting, interesting to learn that that's what something that's Fann what Fannie Mae did. So they are, you know, they are in tune to the market. They're um, they're very knowledgeable, and so they they kind of they they see the pinch that we're feeling when it comes to affordability. Um, also, and I'm not sure if you've he, this isn't what um, this isn't from Fannie Mae, but FHFA uh, has come out and they're potentially working on a an FHA loan that is 100% financing. So no more three and a half percent down for FHA. It's in the works. Nothing set in stone, but it's in the works. That that'd be huge. That'd be huge. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. That's. I mean, because right now the only programs, if you are getting a loan with zero, zero you don't, you know, down. zero percent down, is v USDA and FBA, right? VA, USDA, and of course, if you use FHA with down payment assistance, but some of that down payment assistance isn't really assistance. It's just a second loan with a small payment or, you know, you can't sell that thing for the house for 15 years or have to pay it back. Ooh. So it's technically not, Oh wow. you know, it is assistance, but it's, you know, there's strings attached per se. Right. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, I came away from the conference with, you know, with just a, uh, you know, a huge, I'm so glad. So that Doug Duncan was his name. Uh, meeting that guy was, you know, just eye opening. And yeah. now I have, you know, I can go to direct to Fannie's website and get get this information. He posts some of his stuff weekly about his forecasting and stuff like that. So it's interesting. Uh, just another notch in, in, you know, in the belt of just learning, getting better, trying to educate, see where things are going, you know, so I can instead of saying, oh, if I had a crystal ball, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. you know, it's good. It's good stuff, you know. Um um, yeah, that's so crazy. I, you know, I think that, I think that here in Charlotte, um, you know, we, the, it's like a groundhog day. We have, we have an inventory problem. We have a large amount of people that want to move into the area because of all the reasons why you want to move somewhere. Right. It right. is there's jobs, the, the cost of living, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. So, so therefore in a lot of cities around the country, there's a, there's a housing shortage. Okay, great. Um, so we're not seeing a lot of constraints on, on prices yet, but what I am telling my sellers or my sellers that want to sell potentially down the line is it is not like it was a year ago. No. Um, 
it the the economy is much different and you can't just <laughs> throw your house up on the market and get into a bidding war and get over asking um that's not happening no, <laughs> no, and your your house is probably going to sit on the market for a bit longer, honestly. Um, and so it's like, it's super important to, as a homeowner, or as somebody who, who, you know, may potentially sell your house one day, you want to maintain your house. You want to keep up with maintenance um, because buyers don't have the money when they're paying these high interest rates to do, to take care of some of the maintenance that you as a seller have neglected over the years. Right. Um, you know, it's just a different market. It's not like a bad market. I mean, it's just different. That's a, that's all. That's what I tell people. And, and I say, if you're a first time home buyer and, you, and today is like, this is the time for you to buy, then yeah, let's buy. Because guess what? I mean, you can refinance when rates go down you're getting in the game sure. right you're getting right. in the game um do i think that every property now like do i really scrutinize prices as a buyer's agent a hundred percent i mean i always have but you didn't have any wiggle room a year ago right I mean, you kind of just had to be like okay like i don't think that this property is worth this based on the comps but we got to pay it Right. or you're not going to get it <laughs> or we got to go over that right um and the the numbers for uh, uh the canopy mls just released the most recent stats bear with me one second i'm just going to pull this up um so, so for the charlotte region new listings were down um by eight percent eight point six percent pending sales decreased and inventory shrank um so you know those are all some key metrics that we look yeah. at um you know from so so september of 23 um the, there were three thousand 316 closed sales. 3,316? Yes. Okay. In September. In 2022, the same month, there were 4,416 sales. 4,416? Yes. So that, that it, we are down almost 25% yeah. from prior year. Right. Now, if you look at year to date, the data year to date, year to date, in the Charlotte region, we've sold 32,375 homes. Okay. Uh, year to date from prior year, like if it was prior year, same time period, it was 40,124 homes. So we're down over 19% sure. year to date. Yeah. Um, now for you and I in the industry, I mean that, I, I definitely feel it in my business. For sure. Um, Everybody is. Yeah. Everybody's feeling it in their, in their business. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I just think that, you know, like, so the average sales price too is up. The average sales price in the Charlotte Metro area for September was right at 470. That's the average sales price. <laughs> but the median you know the median sales price is is down just like not even a percentage um but it's at 380 yeah. for september um and and it I, I don't when it's like that it's it's i feel i don't know i get it, i don't know which stat to share so i just share them both sometimes um because that, they could tell two different stories, kind of depending on like how you're dissecting the data. The data. Sure. Um, the the other stat that I love is the percent of original list price received by the seller. 
So if you list your house at 320, that is, are you getting 100% of that? Are you getting right. below it? So for the month of September, we were at 97.7%. So, so you, sellers were almost getting 98% of what they were marketing the house. Yeah. At. Um, last, and, and I thought this was interesting, prior year, we were at 97.2%. So it's like a half a percentage we've gone up. Not, Interesting. You know, kind of a wash, but, but year to day overall, we're down. We're at 97.3% of list price as, a, as compared to 2022 year to day, where we were at 100.8%. Wow. So it is, <laughs> it is a, a complete, it, it, that's a different market. 100%. Um, you know, I, I just think that it's just important to be smart. I think that there are opportunities for buyers out there and there, there, are. And there are opportunities for sellers because we're just, we're not in, we have the inventory problem that I just spoke to, for um, sure. but you have to, be, um, you have to be smart. You do. And you know, there was, there's a house, I got a contract this morning for, you know, signed yesterday, the property was 699. They got it for 655 with 20, almost $22,000 in temp buy down. Wow. And it was sitting on the market for like 44 days. Nice. That's. That's so that's a hundred percent different market. And this is, this is a client that I've no, I've been, they've been trying to buy a house for like two and a half years and have not been able to. Oh, that's like, that's such a good story. Yeah. So, and she's like, Angela, this is a completely different market than it was when I couldn't, we couldn't win an offer to save our life. We are offering, and you know how much the due diligence was? Zero. What? Zero DD. They had, you know, about seven grand in EMD, but zero. I had to like take a double take. I'm like, is that right? Yeah, is this an error? <laughs> is this an error? <laughs> Did you forget to put this on the contract? <laughs> oh my God. I mean, yeah. that that is like, so for a buyer, like that is, that is huge. I mean, that, the due diligence alone, God, I mean. Maybe it was Maybe it was, was it, maybe it was six sixty nine was the actual list, and we got it for six fifty five. Either way, but still, still ten under and twenty in seller paid. Yeah, yeah ten buy down. So that's you know, that's a lot. <laughs> and and based on what your the, your, the discussions you had with, uh, you know, at, at the event you were just at, there's going to be a recession in Q three ish. So that means that that rates are going to go down. They're, they're so, going to come down. So they're going to come down. that's when those temporary buy down programs. Like I think that a lot of fear people have is like, what if they don't come down? Like, right. And then I'm For stuck sure. in this limbo and everything readjusts. And but that's they're going to come down. Like yeah. all indications lead to that. A hundred percent. And there's another stat that I've. I found, I just um, open up my computer here. I have it a little bit. Um, where is it? Where is it? From 1979 to 1981, rates went from 8% to over 16% in a three year period. Okay, that was in 79. That was with, you know, that crazy inflation period back in the day. In 80, 79 to 81. Home, home values went up, guess how much? How much? 7%. From 79 to 81? Mm -hmm. So the interest rates went up, doubled, just like they've doubled this time. You know what I'm saying? And we're still like 3.2% appreciation right now. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And, I mean, the, the appreciation like year to date, we're, I mean, we're up. Um, if you look at average sales price, almost 5%. 5%, yeah. So. It's crazy, wow. right? That's so That's interesting. interesting. It is, it's crazy, man. Well, 
So, I mean, there's, there's just, there's no inventory out there. That's, that's, that's why the house, the housing market is not going to crash per se. Right. So, um, yeah, that's what's up. And the recession and a recession doesn't mean like a housing recession. No, I feel like that needs to be said sometimes because there's like a lot of PTSD from the housing crash. Yep. And it's like, it's not like, it is a completely, there are so many like protections in place. For sure. So right. that, that doesn't happen yeah. again. For um, sure. Well, cool. I think, God, this was really good. This like, we went over a lot of really great stuff. Um, you know, I, I think if anyone has questions about this stuff, like please reach out to us. Like some of it can be kind of confusing, especially like the buy down stuff that you mentioned, Angela. Yeah. Um, like it's just a solution to temporary buy down your interest rate and you need to work on the seller end to make it most advantageous, Correct. And then, you know, and you need to be working with your lender to figure out amounts. And, and so ask the questions, right? Make sure you're working with a lender who can explain it to you, an agent who knows about this resource and can communicate it to the other side. Um, because there are wins to be had in this market, like the client you just said. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working family in the house. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> All right, so, cool. We're well, awesome. Well, Ash, if you want to have uh, you want to have a, a chit chat about uh, about selling a house, purchasing a house, Ashley Hannah Murphy, uh, holler at her on Instagram. Uh, you want to talk about some financing, holler at me, CLT Mortgage Guy. And in two weeks, see you. We'll back be back at uh, twelve thirty, right? Yep. Rock and on roll. Thursday. Thursday, two weeks. See you then. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.